Lord, we just thank you and bless you again tonight. It just feels so good, Lord God, to be in your presence, to be with one another. We can't say thank you enough to you. If we should be able to say it a thousand times, a thousand in a day, it would still not be enough. It's so awesome. And we love you so much. We thank you that you brought us together. And all the billions of people on the face of the earth. It is you who've arranged that we would share our lives with one another. And for that tonight, Lord, we are so grateful for those we share our lives with. Because we know it comes from you. We thank you for the family of God that you've made us part of. We thank you for these weeks, O oh Lord God, that have been so special before you this year. And we pray, O oh Lord God, as we move into the summer, that you protect us wherever we go. When we join together, O oh Lord God, with our natural families, we go off, O oh Lord God, on vacations, Keep all of us safe. For you're the only sure thing that we have. And you're the only one, O oh Lord, that we know that can protect us all. Protect us, we pray today. For you said if we would ask in your name that you were able and just to do it. We are asking. We are turning it over to you. Keep us free from the diseases and the illnesses and the dangers that are out there as only you can. Now bless your word tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Last week, we began to talk about the day of Pentecost and the infilling of Pentecost. We're going to talk about the wind. And God ordained that the Holy Spirit would come in the sign of the wind. I want to read to you tonight from um, John, St. John chapter 3, Verse 8. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst tell whence it cometh and where it goes. So it is with everyone that is born of the Spirit. And from Ezekiel 37, 9. Then he said to me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breathe, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit comes as the sign of the wind confirming his own word with tongues of fire. For what you confess with your lips, the Lord's word says he will give you. And what you confess with your lips and believe in the, his son, Jesus, you will be saved, the word of the Lord says. The tongue of fire, the holy word, comes forth from your mouth. The Lord gave them a heavenly language to speak on that mighty day. 
Much is said about the Holy Spirit. Much is taught about the Holy Spirit. And much is written about the Holy Spirit in the Word of God. Some of the things that we all know is that we must be in unity together. And God knows that we have been striving and trying to do that in this day and age. We've been striving against all of the divisions that are, that are against us. But when the Holy Spirit truly comes upon us, as it did on that Pentecost day, there were two things that they were given. They were given love. An agape love for one another. And fire is used to fire that love inside of us, purging us from within into a life of holiness before him. When God appeared to Moses, he appeared in a burning bush. But when we receive the Holy Spirit, we see receive a baptism of love. There's something different that happens to us when we come under the unction of the Holy Spirit with one another. There is a love. You could be in two strange places amongst a bunch of strangers and see one another and there will be an exchange that happens to you that only is given to you by this baptism of love that the Holy Spirit pours out upon us. That is what it, God intended to be the strongest force within us is that power of love. These disciples were about to go out to the whole world. And what became the most binding force amongst them, the most unity amongst them, was the love that they were given towards one another by God's Holy Spirit. Now, I'm not talking about just a love that you, that you conjure up within yourself and you know that you must have. But I'm talking about a supernatural infilling, a baptism, a fire of love that grows in your heart for your brother and sister. Recently, we were in a pastor's meeting with this, and this was a state pastor's meeting. And everybody was, was talking about all the things that we could do, was talking about the, the politics that were going on in the world, was talking about how we should be involved more than what we are involved with and how we haven't been involved, all the kind of things that you could imagine or wonder. But at the end of the meeting, an old wise man stood up and said, you can talk about all the things that you want to talk about. And you can make all of the plans that you want to make. But if people don't come to experience the infilling of the Holy Spirit in their life, what does all the knowledge what has all been written? What is all been preached about come to? And he said, nothing. Nothing at all. For what we need in our world today is an experience with the Holy Spirit. This is the sign of that wind, that power of the Holy Spirit coming upon our lives. That supernaturally, 
not with intellectual mind and reasoning, but supernaturally an experience of the Holy Spirit is everything in our lives. So if we are to, to center in on anything about acts and the ability to be able to act out what God has given us in our lives, we need that ex to experience the Holy Spirit. So where are we tonight? When we look out, where is the Holy Spirit? Where is this experience? We can cry all we want. We must come in unity. And we can cry all we want. We must join together. And we must be filled with the word of the Lord. But many saints have built within themselves, they call the interior castles, Many people put all the parts of interior knowledge together within themselves and are just left with the furniture within them. But it isn't until that power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you that your life is changed forever. So where are we? We need to get people to experience the Holy Spirit. Do you want to see an end to the division? Do you want to see the end to the viruses, all the stuff that's coming? Do you want to see an end to racial prejudices and all the injustices that take place, then we need to be on our knees praying as a people that the world we live in would experience the power of the Holy Spirit. For that is why we are here and we can stand, all of us, and we can join all of us in our homes together because that Holy Spirit came upon us. And we can experience the love that it gives us. I have no ability to love like Jesus unless the Holy Spirit comes into my life. Until I experience that power that comes, and yet, this is the promise that God said we would get. For coming to know the Lord, coming in our born-again experience, he says to you, wait, wait. How do I know that a ministry is filled with the Holy Spirit? Because the ministry is not counting numbers. A ministry realizes the only one who can add numbers is God himself. On that day of Pentecost when Peter spoke, who brought the numbers? But the Holy Spirit himself. Who is to bring and add members to the church Worldwide today, but the Holy Spirit itself. You've heard it said, unless the Lord builds the house, they that labor in vain. We go through the same thing. We continue the construction because it's within us to do so. But we know that our pews and our rural houses will remain the same. And our numbers will continue to decrease unless we get folks to experience the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is what we live for, what we came into this world for, 
and what we are a part of. For the miracle of the wind was for the disciples. The miracle of the tongues was for the disciples. But the great miracle of drawing the crowds is the Holy Spirit. So I speak in a tongue. I speak in the midst of the wind that is around me. But I call upon the Holy Spirit to bring the lives back into the church, back into the house of God. If there was ever a time that we need to be upon our knees day and night before God, the first thing of our life begging the Lord for is the movement of the Holy Spirit. For believe me, without it, we are empty. And we will not fulfill what we would like to see take place without the Holy Spirit. So at the end of that meeting, when all of the agendas were spoken and all of the reasons for everybody to do what they thought we should do, that one man's voice was like Peter's voice that stood up in the crowd that day and thousands were at it because he knew in his heart that we can't go anywhere without experiencing the Holy Spirit. So we pray tonight that as you wake up every morning and you thank God for the life that has been returned to your soul. But the first prayer upon your lips is, come, Holy Spirit. Come, we need you. You see, when the power of the Holy Spirit begins to take over in your life, people show up. Things happen. Things are out of your control and in the spirit of God's control. The Holy Spirit is that great power of Almighty God in whom teaches its children that Trust me, for you don't know where the wind comes and where it goes. But keep a careful watch. Keep looking. Looking for the move of God's Spirit. And with your heart and in your imagination, you join with that movement of the Holy Spirit in life. As the power of the Holy Spirit came into that room that day and filled these people who were not preachers, who were very illiterate in what God was about to do, he swept in with the power of the wind and picked them up and moved them to where he would plant them. And what would he do? He would give them the words, the words for life. Under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you would be amazed at what will happen.
And the signs of the Holy Spirit will always fall those who are under the Holy Spirit. For people will be healed. People will be delivered. People will have a changed status in life. Men and women will leave the world behind them and come to join together in the community of love. This is what we need. That great community of the Holy Spirit, now again, are we willing to say to ourselves, we got troubles. It's not about our plans. It's about getting the Holy Spirit to come upon us. Come, Holy Spirit. We need you. We need to think. We need to become a carbon copy of Jesus. We need to walk in your wisdom, in your way, and in your truth. Help us during these summer months. Take us into a place of peace. Take us in a place of rest. Take us in a place of silence. Take us in a place where you can speak to us. And that breath of life might move through us. And then when you're ready, stand us before men and let us be able to speak and breathe upon them the anointing of your spirit. We just ask this tonight in Jesus' name.